Hello everyone, Leon here from Shine Sparkers, and today we apparently do not have game audio. Um, bear with me one moment, apologies about this. Uh, that is not the greatest start, um, but I'll start anyway. So Leon here from Shine Sparkers, and today we are streaming some Super Metroid in celebration of its 30th anniversary. I will let Roy take take the lead while I try to sort this out momentarily. Roy, are you there? Um, I don't think Roy's end is actually coming through because it's not... Yeah, um, bear with me one moment while I sort this out. I think I might know the issue. Um, and then we can do that again. We did test this beforehand and it was working perfectly, so I have no idea why it's decided not to. I, I think it's just sod's law with me because it. I always seem to have some technical difficulties one way or another. I just attract all those bugs, which is a pain, but it is what it is. And let's see, does that help at all? Hopefully it does. So go ahead again, Roy. Roy, you there? Now I can't hear right. This is going spectacularly. Uh, bear with me one moment. I'm just going to go to a quick break and hopefully this will work out again in just a moment. And we are back. Game audio is here, which is great. Um, but yeah, once again, terribly sorry about the technical di technical difficulties from earlier. Um, everything's sorted out now. Fingers crossed it stays that way. So uh, Roy, go ahead and introduce us again, where everyone should hopefully be able to hear your lovely voice. Hello, am I coming through? Uh, yes, you are. Fantastic. Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. As Leon said, I'm Roy, the creative director of Shine Sparkers. We are streaming Super Metroid on the 30th anniversary, and it's March 30th. I swear we didn't plan this. Uh, I'll be moderating during the stream, and we also have our YouTube manager, Deadweight, on hand for tech support. Um, Hola, que tal? I'm here in the flesh. Although and we're glad to have you here. Flesh, I'm a disembodied voice. Woo. <laughs> so I've tonight got some moral we're support with uh, my own little Metroid. <laughs> Very cute. I made him myself. I, I actually have one of those. Um, Metroid 35, uh, Isabel. 
uh, sent me uh, the prime figure of the Metroid uh, as a gift. So, <gasps> nice. Oh, lucky. Yeah, it, it just sits next to me while I sleep. Um, <laughs> helps helps me sleep somehow. <laughs> it should do the opposite, really. I mean, if it yeah. if um, it's draining all of your uh, energies, <laughs> that makes sense. Makes you get yeah, a bit yeah, sleepy. Just be careful. You don't overfeed your Metroid. That's all I can say. We should have like <laughs> Metroid pet tips or something like that. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's actually begin because we've been going for about five, eight, no, eight minutes and still not done anything yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's special setting mode? What? What's new? I think that's like extra options. Ah. Nice. Anyway, let's just get started. The, the last, last Metroid, Metroid oh. is in captivity. I forgot, I don't need to do voiceover. <laughs> the galaxy is at peace. Dan Oson's handiwork at work. Is that the artist? That's the guy who voiced uh, that line, yeah. Ah. Uh... kind of weird talking and then uh i have the stream open and whatever i say uh echoes yeah, probably no. wouldn't do that if uh i was streaming myself but and we're not like, even playing i don't know if you're experiencing that i'm not yeah that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. fine though i'm glad that this is just working and yeah same here yeah, we're gonna have a fun time tonight. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to talk in the chat, or if you have questions for us, then feel free to ask them, and uh, we'll see how far we get tonight. Um, we're going for any percent, so no pressure to get 100% unless you want to. <laughs> uh, and we'll just see how far we go. I will say this right now, I do not have the patience to 100% most games. <laughs> Super, Super Metro is pretty easy to 100%. Um, yeah. You kind of just stay, you do the same thing you usually do, and just take a couple detours. Obviously you need to route it properly, but um, there's, an, there's an entire part of the map that they specifically didn't put any items in because they wanted to keep things like tight when running through the game 100%, you can just skip that part out. Nice. Yeah. The challenge isn't in getting 100%, it's in doing it quickly enough that you get the ending with Demis taking her suit off. Yeah. If that's something you want. And also the challenge is just kind of remembering where the items are, because there's no uh, in-the-moment percentage completion. It's an after-the-game thing. And that's that was changed in later Metroid games. Yes. Meanwhile, Just... I'm currently trying to get 112% in Hollow Knight, and, uh... <sighs> Ooh, where are you up to? I'm interested. 108. I've That's done the Path bad. of Pain, and the first three... Pantheons. Uh... The first two, or, or the first three. I have done 111%. Oh. Oh. So I just have the fourth pantheon to do, and then I'm done with the completion. I don't even think I've gotten 50% yet in Hollow Knight. Like, I only just started playing it the other week, like, on and off. <laughs> you know what, I think you're forgiven then. <laughs> yeah. Although I am enjoying it so far. It's a very good game. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Shine Sparkers Plays Hollow Knight. Last well, Sparks plays Super Metroid and exclusively talks about other Metroidvanias. Yes. <laughs> oh, crud. I remember this. Didn't I, I die a few think... times the first time I played this, uh... You might have. It's pretty easy to get through this first part, though. 
Apologies, I haven't played a Metroid game for a while. <laughs> I played a Metroidvania recently, but um Is that Hollow Knight or a different one? Uh Hollow Knight, yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just the I controls I need to get used to. Yeah, I had the opposite yeah. problem about I, I first played Hollow Knight in like 2021. I hate oh, it. I'm so, I'm so used to Metroid. I'm used to Metroid. If you're allowed to take a lot of hits in Metroid Hollow Knight, you're really not. It's a very finishing game. Um, so I really just didn't like it. I played seven hours of it and I gave up and I had to come back later. <laughs> no, I'm like 111%. <laughs> if you shoot Ridley enough, you can get him to drop the baby's capsule, but he quickly picks it back up again. Uh, oh! This is an odd You know, if um, Metroid games had achievements, that'd be an achievement. Yeah. Oh yes. I just noticed you don't actually get any damage from any debris falling on top of you. No, no. You just get knocked back, back a bit, which is a bit annoying, but not as annoying as dying because of steam getting in your face. Imagine that, the greatest bounty hunter in the universe, killed by steam. She got instantly killed Damn by Gabe. one spinning set of blades uh, on Uthagra, so... <laughs> the power of Samus's suit and its defensive capabilities are a bit inconsistent. Yeah. So it's just um, upping your uh, volume a bit, because you're a bit quiet. Sorry about that. That's alright. Luckily, there is person-to-person -person volume changing, so... Say if they, someone yeah. is talking too much, you can just... Push him down a bit. No, that that way, that way. I forgot my uh, face cam is mirrored. <laughs> yes, I use that to mute Gladrax all the time. <laughs> the anti-French button. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this should be an F FYI. We're not racist against French people, honest. <laughs> Just Gladrax. Yes. <laughs> no, we love him. Yeah. Hey, come Sometimes. on! Negative press is press. Get Chicebuck is trending for the wrong reasons. <laughs> no, no, we like to be a wholesome site that doesn't engage in, uh, you know, mean spirited, controversial content. Because the internet is full of that. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Sorry for that. Unless it's people who can't get through that one room in Metro Dread. <laughs> well,. Oh. There's a, there's a room like that in Super Metroid, if you remember that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wonder how long it took them to, that per that particular person to get through that. I'm actually interested. Ooh, well, I know it, it took, took me a Darren long time. two years. It took da Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Still two Ooh, years. Leon, I think you're soft locked because that tunnel's only one block high and you can't get through it. Is it? I think it's time to go to r slash Metroid and declare that we're soft locked. What? <laughs> No, surely I can get through somewhere in here. No, I, I'm being sarcastic. Uh, um, it's quite a running thing on like Metroidvania subreddits. You'll get people uh, who get to an obstacle, and then we'll immediately put help. <laughs> I've soft locked. <laughs> oh yeah. Remember? Do you remember what this room was? You might have to uh, tweak my memory because my memory's been very bad recently. From the first Metroid, ah. this was the shaft behind Mother Brain's room. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a really neat detail. I haven't detail. got that far in the first Metroid, to be fair. Please, please don't kill me. Did you ever play Zero Mission? Um, no, I want to though. I've been trying <gasps> to try it. Like, it, it's on. That's what we it's... need to stream next: is you hmm. playing Zero Mission for the first time. Wasn't yeah, I it think a 3DS ambassador game. No, no that, that was Fusion. Fusion. Oh yeah, Fusion I really like. I've still not Fusion. I have a habit of starting games and then sort of getting distracted by other things right before I complete them. <laughs> yeah, okay. and this I, is I where Mother's Brain. I just brain... Like completing things because it's sad. Because it's like this is a great game, but I don't want it to end. <laughs> I feel you though, know, yeah. Yeah, um, Zero Mission. I think 
I think in just in terms of like an overall package is probably if someone wants to play a 2D Metro for the first time, I'd give them Zero Mission. I would um, only recommend the first Metroid for historical reasons, like if you want to see where it began. Hmm. And this is another legacy room from uh, yes, the first say. Metroid. Yeah. Well, I, I would say I actually think the first Metroid yeah. does some things well that Zero Mission doesn't do. Unfortunately, uh, I think the first Metroid feels very lonely and isolated, and Zero Mission feels comic booky, and that's fine. That's not like a complaint. It's just you—that's the only reason I don't think you can say like Zero Mission is a complete replacement because I Zero Mission that. is a much better game. It's a, like a top ten game for me. Mm. Metroid NES is one of the worst Metroid games in my humble opinion. Uh, I just don't enjoy it too much. But I would say that hasn't aged well. Yeah, no, it hasn't aged well. But if I wanted that like feeling of being like, oh my goodness, I'm lost, and I, this is like a haunting experience, I wouldn't go to Zero Mission. I would potentially go to Metroid yeah. NES. So, you know, it's a it's a very nuanced take, I know, but that that is how I uh, feel, uh, which is why I don't think it's fair to like, uh, as has been the discourse on Twitter recently. It's not exactly fair to call something a replacement in a game because yeah, you never know. No. And really, it shouldn't replace. It should be considered an add-on. This oh, is a new sure, take yeah. on the formula. Yeah, no, Zero Mission did exactly what it needed to do. It could have done some things differently. Who cares? It's an amazing game, and I really enjoy it. Yes. How do, how do I get that energy tank up there? I forget. Did I even get you it on my first playthrough? Do you know how to wall jump? <laughs> you want to learn how to do an infinite? Oh, I forget how to wall jump. Do I have to be spinning? Yes. Uh, wall jump, you have to spin. You have to, when you're touching a wall, press the opposite direction, then jump. Okay. But it is like press opposite, then jump. It's, it's, it's... If you press jump and then the opposite, it won't work. You have to be quite deliberate with it. Ah. It's like a very quick... Yeah, like that. It's very quick, like... Uh, da -da. Ah. Yeah, there you go. I can't get enough, like, distance there. Oh, well. I'll come back to that another time. Ooh. Can I, yeah, you can always come back later. That's the beauty of Metroid games. Yeah. And you can now turn small and round. Yay! I can morph into the morph ball using the morph upgrade. Morph into a ball to enter narrow passages with the morph ball. Yeah, you can do it better than me. I always found it so weird that the right side of that room was so cramped compared to the original Metroid. And it's actually because Super Metroid is the only... Sorry, it's not the only 2D game. There's two 2D games that go for completely Euclidean ge geometry where the rooms actually do line up the way that the layout would suggest they do. And the only two games that really commit to that are Metroid 1 and Super Metroid. The rest all have some kind of overlapping. Why have I uh, disappeared? Well... I've turned invisible. What have I done? <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. there I am. But oh, the, yeah, in that yeah. room, in that room, the reason it's so cramped is because there's another room like jungle brinstar or something that would be crashing straight into that room and it wouldn't line up properly if those if if that room was any longer and i think that's really cool i, I like when games commit to like the geometry all being like uh as i say euclidean uh completely coherent and interconnected and it's a shame that Metro kind of stopped doing that. Uh, now they sort of do zones, where the zones don't have to interconnect with each other, like Fusion and Dread and some Returns. Mm. But it is what it is. There you go. Dang, that would have worked in Zero Mission, I think. <laughs> what wouldn't work in Zero Mission? This room also returns in Zero Mission, I think it was a secret. Yeah, another fun thing about Zero Mission is um, the as you're climbing here, in the original Metro, when you get to the top, you hit an elevator and the game's over. But in Super Metroid, obviously, you hit an elevator and you go 
through some caves before in like Criteria, the the landing site. Uh, and those rooms get added to Zero Mission, so during the escape sequence, instead of going up the elevator and just beating the game, you go through a few rooms from Super Metroid, which is a really cool detail that I always really liked. Yeah, adds to the continuity. Did you ever see uh, Pinaz 91's Zero Mission animated shorts on YouTube? I don't think I ever did. <gasps> oh, okay, so he reenacted the battles with all, all the boss battles in Zero Mission uh, in a very crude animated style. Oh, yes! Oh, they they are beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mother Brain and Samus have a brain training fight and it ends with Samus shooting her DS at Mother Brain's capsule. Okay. Um, I've never seen that for sure. I've definitely never seen that. That's, that's very cute. Okay, well, she's jumping up the shaft. She gets to the elevator, and there's an option. Slow, medium, fast, freaking countdown! Exclamation points in one. She presses that one, and... <laughs> she, ha she holds on to the elevator platform <laughs> for dear life as it <laughs> rockets out into space. Uh, that's good. <laughs> I love a good bit of style, stylistic, um, cre like, creativity. Yeah. Ooh, we did, did a spotlight on Pinaz several years ago, uh, so you can check that out on our website. Sick. Humble plug. <laughs> but yeah, I did something like I did a rookie error. Uh, basically, forgetting to change from the missiles to the charge to the um. Cannon, the beam. So yeah, I just wasted worked... all my missiles. Woo! Yeah, it works differently in this. Um, in Fusion onwards, it's hold down a button for missiles. Yeah. But in the first three. Wow, there's actually there's actually more Metroid games with hold down style uh, than Metroid games where it's like swap between style. Uh, 2D at least. Uh, Prime. 3D, also, you it... just change over. Yeah, 3D works like Super Metroid. You you swap over, you press like, "Hi, I'm in whatever mode." Mm. Oh no, actually, that's for that's for Beam. Sorry, for Missile oh, yeah. in 3D, it gets a dedicated button. Um, it's a separate oh, fire button. It, yeah. yeah. I don't... It's been a while since I played Dread. What is it in Dread? Is it hold down? In Dread, it's hold down. So it's hold down the R button, and when you shoot, you will shoot a missile instead. Um, it's that's the way it has been since Fusion, and the reason that was done is because the GBA didn't have it, it, the GBA only has two face buttons and two shoulder buttons, so they couldn't give a, a yeah. dedicated swap button. So, well, they probably could have, but they didn't. So yeah. the R, the R, the, the L button becomes uh, directional aiming. You hold L and then you press up or down, and then the R button becomes missile mode, so as long as you're holding it down, you'll, you will find missiles instead. Yeah, fun stuff. So I noticed, um, like, there are a few graphical weirdness going on, so, for example, my, um, my shots don't always appear. Is that normal? That's... If your shots aren't appearing, I think that's just a frame thing. I think for some yeah. reason you're seeing it in like 30 frames per second, whereas Super Metroid runs at 60. Oh. So I'm not sure, it's probably just some kind of setup thing. Because I also, yeah. I kind of see it on my end as well. Because um, when I originally played this um, in the stream again, it was fine, but it's probably just uh, the setting. Like you said, the setup for it, because it is a yeah, yeah. OBS, this one. Yeah, it's probably just feeding back to you in 30 instead of 60. Yeah. Um, which wouldn't be noticeable for most things, but it would be noticeable for like flickering. Yeah. Flicker, because flickering will, will go like frame on, frame off. Mm, which would explain yeah. why when I was going up the elevator, it dis yes, so disappeared that, because that's I triggered exactly it yeah. at the point where it flickered. Yeah, it's it's they're trying to make uh, her look. It, it it happened all the way to the DS era.
Um, it's to try and make transparency with sprites, which isn't so easy to do. They will flicker between a frame where it's fully opaque and a frame where it's gone. So it just depends which of those frames you catch. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Morph into a bomb. With the morph bot, that's not that's not how it goes. Ah, uh, you did an arm pump. <laughs> Rookie mistake. How could you not? <laughs> nah, it's okay. This... I've never been able to do it. Yeah, this me neither. This fight I always found way too difficult, and then I realized you can morph all under his legs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it makes sense. It's like they just taught you how to mold, yeah. it, so they to use it. But I, I, yeah, I didn't know. Oh yeah, and the purple. For the test. Purple, purple, yeah, purple floaties are healthy. No, because I think no. they have a completely different graphic in Dread. But honestly, it's been a while since I played Dread. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Dagnab. I mean, I could do rewind, but I'm deciding against it because why not? Oh, the purism. Yes, that's the word that I'm looking for. <laughs> Says the person who's only played this game once. <laughs> uh, I played Super Mario quite a few times. And I think it was just like only last year or the year before which I played it for the first time. Yeah. Apparently it took I'm me good. six hours to do, according to my save file. I mean that makes sense. It's it's a fell it's a pacey game. Uh I I don't think I've played a Metroid game since Prime Remastered actually. Um and part of that is because they ke it kept seeming like Metroid stuff would happen. Um like it kept it, it, it was like oh well prime remasters like 30 pounds so that's and they don't even usually do that for their remasters so maybe it's because they want to release some more metroid remasters down the road possibly yeah and uh yeah and then hopefully so you I, get I, a uh, sort of maybe a collection going on that's exactly it. It was like it's like it's weird for them to uh, for Nintendo to release it cheaply, and so I was like, oh, I'll I'll wait out and see what happens. And it's been radio silence on the Metroid series, so um, yeah, <laughs> just still waiting and waiting and, and waiting. waiting and waiting. I mean, that's being a Metroid fan generally. Being a Metroidvania fan at this point, the Silk Song uh, community is going insane. I know. Also, Hello, that's Wayne. part of why I'm. <laughs> that's part of why I'm playing Hollow Knight now, so that I can be ready for Silk Song whenever that comes. I know a friend who's going to make a joke like Silk Song review before the game came out, and then thought, nah, because I'll start working this and it'll randomly come out, won't it? <laughs> and he thought that like two years ago. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he would have been safe. <laughs> oh no. Um, <coughs> I mean, they wanted to put it out last year, and then yeah, they, 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 they. But it does seem like what's happened is that they keep wanting to release it, but their own like dedication to put as much content as they can in. It's no. Team Cherry said that with Hollow Knight, it released basically unfinished, and with just the amount of content they could afford, they literally released it when they ran out of money. They were making it until they had no money. Oh come to spend. on! Oh no. Ah. Oh. It's like I mean, And um energy tank. that was the thing it was it was a kickstarter and it raised enough to get some like content in um and then they just had to release it. The problem now is after the game came out they got enough money that they could put a bit extra content in. Um but then the game slowly got to a point where it just exploded and sold really well. So now with Silk Song, they're never going to run out of money. So the game will never come out. <laughs> yeah, my maybe that's here, how they'll do it. My theory here is maybe my Metroid will be able to whisper some battle strategies for me to get good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, yes. 
You just need Hornet from Hollow Knight to cheer you on. Get good! Sha! Sha! <laughs> the diff difficult part is actually keeping Metroid on. Yeah, so this, well, will, this is my charm for good luck. It's a challenge to keep the charm <laughs> wet worn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> At some point, I need to say, like, a head strap to. Oh, no! Nearly that! Okay, stay on the desk then if you're gonna be that way. Bad Metroid. <laughs> yeah, I like. Super I really like high. Silk Song as a name. And they say Swans. It is a bit like a Swan Song, but at the same time, Team Cherry have hinted that they are, they're, they're happy to make more Hollow Knight games after Silk Song. So. But they have to release Silk Song first. Yeah. <laughs> In before um, Hollow Knight, the Bapanada Chronicles. It's yeah, about the Bapanada. <laughs> On stream the other day, I literally did sigh and then say, Bapanada. <laughs> um, it's this funny is... how iconic the game has become. Yeah. This is still a Super Metroid stream, just to be clear. Yeah, Super Metroid stream, but there's no Metroid games to talk about, so we talk about another series in which there's no games to talk about. Yes. <laughs> Tune in next week, where we discuss Senua's Saga, Hellblade 2. <laughs> and then after that we talk about Blasphemous 2. <laughs> I still have Amen. barely made progress in Blasphemous 1. Um, I really need to go back to that one. Oh, he's People sweating. Pull. He's sweating. He... I okay. never thought yep, that was sweat, and you've ruined this fight for me. Thanks. <laughs> well, it's better than blood. It don't. It just. It, it does look like sweat. <laughs> it does, unless they bleed clear, which I don't understand how that could be possible. The hit sequel to that time Shine Spark has talked about irritable bowel syndrome. Shine Spark has told about. We don't sweat. talk. No, no, no. Executive decision. There are some things we don't talk about. No, that wasn't in an actual episode. <laughs> oh, I serious. know. I know it was. Yes. Oh, we, we, we don't reference the past. <laughs> no. no. Another new side to feast him. So, yay! Hey, amazing. Well done. Third time's Great the job, job, as they say. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hats off. Uh, make sure to save, because this game does not have a uh, oh, checkpoint. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. like uh, later games do. Well, there are there is also save states, but if you want to be pure, I forgot that you could rewind if if stuff got dicey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's my commentary. Good night, guys. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, people often call Hollow Knight a 2D Dark Souls, but Blasphemous ap actually feels like Dark Souls. Like, the whole world is very... It has that sort of vibe to it. Hollow Knight is very... Um... I wouldn't say forgiving, but... Oh, it's an unforgiving can... game. No. What I mean is, like, you can memorize patterns and... Um, yeah, it's... And it's easier in that sense. It does empower the player in that sense. And once you realize that, the game changes and it becomes... And, and it, you feel cool playing it. And it's yes. one of the reasons I couldn't get... It. I'm glad you bring it up. It's one of the reasons I couldn't get into it for a while. Because I'm used to Metroid, where the patterns are kind of loosey-goosey. And you're expected to get hit. And that changed with later Metroids. I remember playing Dread After Hall being like, oh yeah, this is like a different this is a totally different experience. Yes. Um, what year did Dread release? Was it 2022? 21. I remember because for personal reasons, that same time frame uh the following year in 2022 was very difficult for me. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um Sorry, it's just it didn't it just doesn't feel like it's been three years. It just that just really hurt me. 
Oh, I know. Where, where is the time gone? How has it been seven years? No, it'll be... I can't do math in my head. It's Hold seven years this year that Samus Returns came out. Oh! Which is... Yeah. No, it is seven years. Um, since the announcement of Prime 4. Yes, that as well. Yeah. Can um, you get anything? Is this just a shortcut, or is there like... That's that's a shortcut back. It's 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 just it's just the, it's like hey you bombed it one side. <laughs> Me too. I'd say Super Metroid is one of the first games of its era that really got game design and was really trying to. Because even if other games at the time are like good, like genuinely good games um, from the SNES era, there's something about there's something about Super Metroid where there's so many ways in which it could have been designed very haphazardly, where it was designed very intentionally in a very friendly way that feels modern. Um, and I think that's why it has stood the test of time, even with, you know, it's it, it, it it's a bit of a floaty game. It doesn't play quite as nice as some of the later ones. Yeah, it's definitely held up better than the original Metroid. Uh, or Metroid mm. 2. Yeah, I think Metroid 2 holds up better than people think. It's black and white, and I think people just assume. It's... Yeah, I, I will say it's better than the first Metroid. It, it is better than the first. Um, it's it's my most replayed Metroid game. I have like I've sent, I wrote about it on the Shine Sparkers website a number of years ago. But yeah, it's Super Super Metroid definitely does hold up. Um, it. it, it I do think that some people don't really enjoy it because it feels old, and I and I understand that. And I think people are more than allowed to feel that, honestly. Um, Ageist. I think, like, for people play, playing it brand new, like the biggest thing for them would probably be just the controls. Because yeah, you know, like when I first played it, I do find the controls a bit clunky. But you just, with me, I sort of when I per once I persevered through it a bit. It's like, okay, this isn't too bad. That's it. Same here, yeah. Mm. I have the patience for jank, so I can I can wait it out until I get used to it. But I can understand if you um, went straight from playing Metroid Dread to Super Metroid. Yeah, it's because... a barrier it's a barrier of entry for sure. Yeah. Um, I still think let's face it, Metroid Dread's just smooth. Smooth as butter. Metroid Dread fe it feels like park. It's a oh, yeah. very different feeling. Um, so and, basi yeah. basically, uh, if um, Samus was in Mirror's Age, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of does. To be honest, it's um, it's it's so clear why the Shine Spark. Sorry, not the Shine Spark. Uh, um, what am I thinking of? The Speed Booster mm. uh, wasn't in. Oh, the room. This room. Um, it makes sense why, in my head, why the speed booster wasn't in Samus Returns, because it was almost like they needed to let it go to get it to the point where it's the most fun to use, most versatile speed booster. Um, I think part of it was also hardware limitations. Yeah, if you're going... Yeah, actually, you're right, because if you're going that... It's going to be loading assets really quickly, and... The screen is quite small as well, so it might be quite comfortable uh, to like, yeah, visually show. I think that's a fair enough thing to say. Yeah. Um, other M have issues with the. Uh, oh my God! Speed yes. Booster. Was it the yes. Speed Booster or Shine Spark and Other M? I can't remember. It's been so many years since the last one. It was I, the I don't think I. Re I think I only just unlocked uh, Other M's the only, really the only Metroid game I haven't beaten. <laughs> I just, That's yeah, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I had such There's a, <laughs> a sizable portion of the fan base will not blame you. Yeah, it's, it's not the worst game I've ever played, but I, it's not a game that I would have played if it didn't have, like, at all, if it didn't already have the Metro name attached to it. Without that name, I would never would have touched it. I mean, Chief. 
I'm gonna be honest, like, I, I enjoyed parts of it. So, like, it was somewhat enjoyable. Yeah. In my honest opinion. No, I think there's stuff to enjoy it, for sure. I would support a remaster with better controls. Um, I mean, that's probably all they would do. Hey, Axel. Yeah, this music's slick. Yes, I love this song. It is a great track. I didn't actually like it the first good. time I played it because it reminded me of a Ben, like the feeling of a Ben 10 game on DS that I had. Uh, and, I, uh, and then after I got over that, I was like, yeah, this sucks. This pipe is killing, like, it's spawning monsters so I can get um, energy things, but it's actually just killing me instead. And now, oh, there we go. It's taking me off guard. Yeah. That's, the, that's the problem. Dread oh, didn't yeah. have those. I just realized Samus Returns had these, like, pipes. But Dread really did away with them. Wow. Yeah. I tried to go oh, back no, to Samus no. Returns, but unfortunately my 3DS is L button. And, uh, <laughs> it's quite an important button in Samus Returns. How do I open that? You can't. You have to run past it. Ah, I see. Hmm. If only you were a little bit richer. <laughs> so they close automatically when you get near them. Yeah, so yeah. you should be quick enough. Mm. Gotta go fast. Yeah. <laughs> Chili dogs. So, Metroid X Sonic needs to happen. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, dude. No. Smash Bros. No, not kidding. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I've realized, like, the thing I like about Metroid is very specific. Like, I play certain Metroid games and I fall so much for certain things they give me. Uh, and part of it is just sort of exploration, um, feeling immersed in a map. Feeling like I'm rewarded for remembering a map's layout and, you know, becoming familiar with an area. Also feeling like areas are alive and just like, mm. also like, uh, like a breathing place. And I think Super Metroid is the game that does that kind of thing best for me when it comes to like the 2D series. And that's also kind of why I just didn't really vibe with other M. Um, I. I don't feel the the plot's very movie like, but I feel like I've seen better mm. movie plots. So it just it just wasn't for me. It was it was just I like certain things from other Metro games. Um, and I can just stick to those really. <laughs> yes. This is why this is what drives me crazy about some people who say, Oh, other M killed Metroid. This is it No. Just don't play it. Enjoy it, the Metroid it really games is that as you simple like. Like that. Yes, um, yes. Game it's amazing like how much. <laughs> well, yeah. It's amazing how many uh, complaints could be resolved just by removing yourself from the equation. Unlike, I'm going to be real. I don't care what isn't can in Metroid. That's another thing that comes up. I really don't like like to because it disrupted the canon and made it really like weird to piece together and i'm gonna be real metroid canon isn't so airtight to look over those kinds of little things and just be like you know there are uh, for sure inconsistencies yeah pe people really do argue a lot about you know uh, this developer said this and therefore these games aren't even canon and stuff like that and i think that kind of just takes away from like just appreciating art for art's sake when you get hung up over details as if they're historical facts when in actuality these are um, video games at the end of the day so yes you're doing everything right by the way leon um that's good i mean is there really a wrong way probably i mean I want to say there's not a wrong way to play video games. Somehow we have both New Bridge and Jeffrey's memes, so no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, 
Well, that's just a missile relay. That's the only use for that little pathway. Great. Yes, it's 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 an optional. I think, yeah, I think in general, we have to remember, like, certain Metroid games just try different things, and that's why people have different opinions. Because some people just really like action. They like feeling, they like the feeling that sounds like a badass. So, yeah. there's certain Metroid games, like Dread and Other M, where you can feel very powerful. You can feel like ninja, like like, like a ninja, uh, like, like some unstoppable force. But some people are more sort of into, like, the environmental storytelling, or just the the immersion, and that's when the sort of quieter, more subtle games like Prime 2 come in. Um, that's who I am, so Prime 2 is one of my personal favourites. And as a result, I like Metroid 2 more than I like Dread. Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily an objectively better game, I don't think people should follow me in that very niche opinion, but that is how I end up there. And I, yeah, I just feel like we should remember that kind of thing when we, like, discuss any video game, really. But as we go forwards, we kind of need to keep that in mind as a community for Metroid, because, um, you know, we, do, we don't want there to become like a a one way to uh, see and enjoy the series um, when the series is trying new things out at the moment. Mm. Dread tried a lot of, Dread did away with a lot of old conventions, so. so like, um, the only thing I didn't really like about Dread was just. Music, the music selection felt lackluster from like Some there's not really a lot of but I suppose like it adds more atmosphere that way that sense of dread so it makes sense on sort of that I way. mean I highly agree that the and that's what I mean people just get different that. Oh, sorry, you cut out from over there. oh sorry some people say I've heard people say it's their favourite soundtrack in the entire series. Um, is Metroid Dreads, if they had to pick a single Metro game for their soundtrack. And that's what I mean, people ha people go into these games for wildly different reasons. Um, there's something for everyone. There's, there's, there's Metroid game for everyone. I don't think any two Metroid they I think the most similar, uh, discounting like the Prime trilogy, because they're all on the same engine. But, like, even Fusion and Zero Mission aren't that similar. Zero Mission's much more like Super. Mm. Oh, hello. Oh, another thing. Great. Yeah. Charge beam. It would be insane if the other thing also had another <laughs> This room is just giving everything oh, to you. I need the power bombs for that. Yeah. There is a there is a room at some point where there's a, a missile and then below it is a secret door that goes to a room with a missile with a secret missile in it. Hey, hey Darren. Darren. Um well, hello. Welcome. Um we're Shine Sparkers. This awesome little website that was started by an awesome <laughs> man about maybe two years ago. I can't remember, but yeah, we've been around a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're having a nice little time here. Yeah, we're playing Super Metroid. It's like Hollow Knight with a gun. <laughs> oh, and uh, the person wearing the suit is a woman. I don't know if you knew that. What? This is news to me. Brown news, new news to me. I thought it was just like Master Chief or something like that. Nah. Oh, I can't wait until the end of Silk Song, where Hornet takes off the mask and she was Silk Song. <laughs> <laughs> on, give me some of that energy. There we go. Energy. Energy. Oh, damn it. It doesn't have to attract the thing. Attract the thing power up. Yes, that's what it is. No, yeah. that didn't come in until Samus returns. Yes. Uh, in terms of 2D games. Yes. It was always there in Prime. Yeah, but in Prime, Prime it's uh, based on the charge beam, whereas Samus returns it was uh, automatic. 
Yes. Was it infusion? No, no. fusion. You have to manually pick it up as well. And it's the axe parasites. Sometimes oh, of they'll course just come it is. Into yeah. You. I, I was wondering why I was drawing a blank, but yeah, the axe parasites fly around, so I guess I run away from you, so that's to also you. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's its own yeah. shtick. And then um, Zero Mission is just Super Metroid system again, and then Dread is a mix <laughs> of Samus Return system and uh, Fusion system. Because as we say, every Metroid is different. <laughs> yes. How was your day, Darren? I didn't get a chance to talk to you earlier. How did you celebrate Super Metroid's 30th birthday? Annoying that it takes five shots to um, get the red doors. Yeah, they changed yeah. that in the later Metroids, as yeah. you know. For good reason. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, we... it's rude to spit. Don't want to morph into a ball with the morph ball. <laughs> Amiibo. Honestly, Dread adding a separate button for the Morphle made things so much. Did did um Samus Returns on 3DS did have a separate button for Morphle? Actually, I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember either. I think it did. Otherwise, yeah, you just crouch down twice. I mean, that's just game changer in um the 2D games for me. Sorry, yeah. I zoned out, but I can't answer the question. Samus Returns, you tapped down twice, but you can tap the touch screen, and it will put you in the morph ball instantly. Oh, I hate this one. Oh, excellent. Yeah, it's the outside edges of the touch screen will be various options and things, but the middle is just the map. So if you just tap that sort of empty space, boom, morph ball. Fun fact. Uh, do you know who voices Spore Spot? Because, yes, it is actually voice acted. Really? I thought it would be a Godzilla, like, uh, sound effect, because that's what a lot of Super A lot of them do play. use that, but, uh, one of the developers recorded Spore Spawn's sound. <laughs> is it, like, just Sakamoto or something? Kenji Yamamoto, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> That makes so much sense. It's just like, oh, I need a sound. I'm like, sound. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just do a yawn. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, Minako Hamano recorded Samus's uh, death scream, which... Oh! They said in the interview it wasn't used, but actually, uh, a couple of years ago, data miners found there's a scream that you can very faintly hear in the uh, game over jingle. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I always thought I could hear a scream. Yeah. So, um, so that that I was think... isolated, and it could very well be her recording. Mm. So Sorry, crazy. Leon. But yeah, I figured out something new for myself. I had no idea that if you charge beam before going to morph one, then you go into morph one, you drop loads of bombs. I had yeah. no idea yes. that's a thing. Yeah, it's because it was removed in later games. In um, Zero Mission, instead, it fi it just fired the charge beam as you're going into more instead. Uh, and then I could not tell you for the life of me because if you do it. <laughs> you can also do it in other M. But oh, damn they it. haven't brought it back it. in other titles. Of course, because other M is a Super Metroid. A... That makes sense. Ah. Uh. Greatest Metroid game of all time. Look at this gameplay. Let's go. It's a bouncy boy. Yeah, for me, games are more than just the gameplay. The experience as a whole. Um, because some of these bosses are a bit <laughs> funky. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, you can this get is when 
you can get more missiles from shooting the spores, but um. Yeah. It's it's. it's I mean, it's, is, yeah. is missiles or charge beams better for this boss? I can't remember. I uh, think I think it's a pick your poison. Yeah. I think both of them do more or less the same thing. Yeah, but Speedwiz skips this battle as well. I've never been able to do that. Uh, I would like to, though. Yeah, me neither. I've tried. I can he do it. Oh, he got two in. Okay, that's good. Dwarf one's eaten today. He, he, he munching. Oh, he hey. okay, turns into a platform. Well done. Yeah, oh, look at that sepia filter. Oh, try while jumping off of him. Oh, I forgot this is a thing. If you wall jump off the side of his body. Or, or his head. He doesn't yeah, like, wall jump off of uh, his side. Does it jingle, jiggle? It does. And there's a couple of objects in the game that do that. <laughs> Darren, yeah, this Darren, is a I, I education about it, for you. I, I wouldn't have remembered that was a thing if I wasn't told. Alright, what new thing do I get now? Just a pat on the back? Or uh, the, yeah, upgrade? the satisfaction that you beat Spore Spawn, dude. Is that not enough for you guys? No! Games, gamers gamer. are so entitled nowadays. <laughs> back in my day, we used to beat DuckTales and we were happy with it. <laughs> You joke, but um, I did DuckTales last year. Oh my god. It's a fantastic game, but my god. <laughs> Darren uh, can tell you, I was doing a run on extreme difficulty, uh, which is if you die, you start the whole thing over. Is this DuckTales or the DuckTales uh, like re rebake? The remake. Yeah, remake, gotcha. But I'm sure the original was just as hard. Yeah, the only difference is that the original had bonus areas that the remake turned into mandatory areas in order to extend the time a bit. You know, different standards in like what counts as a full video game campaign nowadays. Yeah. But I didn't know that the remake was hard. <laughs> oh, it... Yeah, it, it, it was challenging. It's kind of nutty how a DuckTales licensed game of all things invented mechanics that would become that would reverberate through the industry in time. Because people still call like pogo mechanics like uh, shovel hollowates, uh links down aerial in Smash Bros. like the the Scrooge McDuck Pogo or the DuckTales Pogo. Um and it's just it's just interesting that like a licensed game to have that kind of long-term effect. Yeah. Similar thing with GoldenEye, which popularized yeah. missions, objectives in FPS games. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's, it's crazy. Um, you get the right dev, and it doesn't really matter what it does. They can do something. You won't really see that nowadays, because there's a lot more control put in publishers hands compared to developers hands or even just not even publishers but the company above the publisher especially for licensed games you know um, it's a shame because experimental games can be can, can produce some of the coolest results oh yes um, sh <laughs> i don't know if that was picked up i knocked over something <laughs> i had a crashing in an o shoot <laughs> Shoot was not the word I was going to use, but I stopped myself. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, what age classification did Super Metroid get back in the day? Uh, T for Teen. Oh, well, it's, uh, I don't know if it's a thing back there. On the eShop, it's T for Teen. Or Peggy 12. The ESRB started in September 1994, so it would have been after this came out. Yeah, so it's a retroactive um, ESRB rating in that case. Yeah. I feel like 
this room might take me a couple years to uh, complete. Just oh, so. this room's easy. <laughs> just go for it. Yeah. yeah. I just want to get these guys quick. They're in my way! Oh no! Whatever am I supposed to do? <laughs> to be fair, when I first did it, I did get a, quite a few little tip, like, um, hints, I guess, is the best way to put it. Oh, this room was the tiebreaker for the, um, the Metroid Christmas quiz. Oh, what? Yeah, there's a quiz for sort of Metro community members a few years back, and uh, this was the tiebreak between me and Orph. And I won! <laughs> you did! I just I mathed out, like, I could see in my head how. Uh, without a few too many. It, was. it wasn't like. I don't I don't think it was, um, guess the exact number. It was like whoever's closest. Yeah, but that was it. I just went, like, what's a number of flowers that. It's like enough to be like a main decoration without being like overbearing like this is just too many flowers for yeah and uh that 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 served me well mm. the flowers used to have an article on wick Detroit. the but, flowers um, i yes. liked that quiz too that quiz was awesome I... yeah a lot of fun i want to do another one uh try bombing elsewhere in that area uh, try finger, but what finger? What? That's 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 um that's a Dark Souls reference. I keep <laughs> referencing Dark Souls. <laughs> this is the Super Metroid Hollow Knight Dark Souls. Um... <laughs> We're really covering the entire Metroidvania landscape <laughs> yes. to keep relevant. <laughs> Tune in next week. It's right in the street. middle. I'm just gonna say it. it's. I'm pretty sure it's right in the middle of that big block. You do not have the right dead weight. Hey, hey, hey! I run this YouTube channel. I can change the direction of content. <laughs> He's gone rogue. If I turn this into a Hollow Knight channel, no one can stop me. Except also probably Darren, I think. <laughs> and me. Oh, okay, fair enough. You do not have the right... Well, if that's a Dark Souls reference, that's because I haven't actually played Dark Souls. <laughs> I need to. It's on my list. I'm going to play the game. But, I've... Um... I've watched Darren play it, and Gladrax, and a couple of our other friends. Oh, yeah, Gladrax loves Elden Ring. Yes. I'm convinced Gladrax legitimately... Noah has only played four video games. <laughs> Probably. He also has the same six jokes. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's actually fair. Yeah. But legit, his Twitter to is... To be fair, like, so do I. I also have the same six jokes. <laughs> his Twitter is legitimately um, complaining about Pokemon as a whole, but also talking incessantly about his love as a whole. Uh, Metroid Dread, Elden Ring, and one other game, but I've already forgotten because those three are so many <laughs> that take up so much of it. And Hollow you know Knight, what? and then something else. And you know what? I am not a man. I, 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 I am not a man who can throw stones in the glass house of making a couple video games your entire personality. Yeah. Is there anything I can work on? If there's anything I'll do here. This is legit. Just a little tee -hee. Yeah. Look what's coming up later. Woo. I will say, it's not up here. Yeah, this is just to be like, whoo <laughs> Give you a preview. I know what I'll need to be doing. What I'll need to be doing? That, that... I'm just questioning my English for a sec there. Eh. But yeah, I know what I'll need to be doing here later. Oh, yeah. The crack in the gra glass beyond the glass. Chasing the dragon. Well, I'm just referencing Harmony of a Hunter album. Uh, sorry, uh, song titles. <laughs> Always acceptable. 
There we go. Oh, there we go, Darren. You happy? Me. I made a Shine Sparkers pop culture reference in a Shine Sparkers stream. You have finally earned the right to uh, call yourself a member of the team. No, you earned that a long time ago. I am finally a Shine Sparker. <laughs> Maybe the real Shine Sparkers were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've always. Yeah, you do have the right, you do not. <laughs> I, I have need to um... oil my chair. Oh, don't use up your super missiles. You want to turn those off? Mm. I've, I've um, I always said like oh, the I'm moment sorry. I released something like truly original for Shine Spark, I was like, hey, I've been on the team for a year, and then that just kept getting delayed, so I've never been able to. Uh, and now I don't know when's like a good time to announce it because it has been a year, and I think it's just a bit awkward. <laughs> Oh well, things are coming along now, which is nice. Um, but... That's just content creation, ah. baby. Yep. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine, Darren. Thank you very much. Just got back from... Um... Oh, damn, it's hot. Hot, hot, hot! But yeah, I just came back from holiday to Amsterdam with my boyfriend yesterday. Very tired from the travelling, but I'm doing right. As a second generation Shine Sparkers don't want to die. I don't know yeah, what we're really not letting die, you. but I'm I'm sure I won't. It's like he needs the sight. Oh, it won't die under my watch. Nah. And we've got some cool things coming uh in the near future, hopefully. Yeah. To be completely fair, every time Roy has kind of assignments, I have completed it. Uh, ASAP. It's it's just, uh, in terms of creating original content, it's just been such a slog for me to do that in general for the last year. And I still do that as like a main, like I still do like which is a main hobby. So things are just slow. That's just kind of the Well, the you have had a lot it. going on. I and have. Like I literally didn't release a, a, a Little King Story video for 10 months and I felt horrible about that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no. I still have a lot going on now. I'm, I'm moving house at the moment. Um, oh. Yeah, me and my me and my partner are trying to buy a house together, and we should be moving into it in a couple months. Um, and yet, amongst all that, I'm still trying to work on everything. <laughs> I can jump high. Oh, it's not about jumping high. It's just every time some jumps, she just goes like, hey, yeah. Hello. How many players skip this item routinely? True. I was in Leeds today. It was very nice. Those were together. What, oh, what eating a Japanese order? restaurant. Okay, yeah, well, that makes sense. What did you order from said Japanese restaurant? I do like Japanese food. Uh, it was a bento box, I believe, because we're in a... Group I've chat never, together and he shares I rarely eat. I rarely eat Japanese. It's right. Thing is, where I am, there's not really any decent Japanese restaurants. Well, I remember back when I was in Birmingham uh, a couple of years ago, there was this really nice Japanese restaurant which um, all us and the demo team went to, which was nice. Um. If you want to know I my like day. If you want to know my day, Darren, um, this morning I was editing down highlights of a stream series that I started ages ago that I finished recently. I don't stream very often. Then, after that, I had to go and work with some tradesmen on the new house uh, that I just mentioned. Then after that, my friend was starting his first and Sorry, I, was I said. And then I, I and he's and I was like, oh, cool, yeah. When, when's bombs. that gonna be? Yeah. Uh, and he said half, half six, and I was like, right, okay, let me try and help you out with that. And there was half an hour of technical issues. And then after that half an hour of technical issues, I had to go straight into this, where I'd already agreed that an hour before the stream, I'd help with any technical issues. 
And then we uh, had half an hour of technical issues. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and then now we're doing this. So my day has just been back-to-back -back YouTube streaming stuff. Um, broken up by a single instance of house-moving stuff. Wait, Darren, did you get um, any ramen from uh, the Japanese place? Because I do love ramen. <sighs> Quite like the lychee flavored ramen, though. that one's quite nice. Ah, uh, fair enough. To be fair, it is expensive for what it is, but it's still fun. <laughs> right, so where to go next? Um, that's a good question, me. Can I use. Charge beams of the air doors? No, I cannot. Probably helps if I. Well, I don't really have much of a map at the moment, do I? If I remember correctly, that is a hot area over here. Yes, it's hot. It's hot in the hot area. It's hot in Topeka. It's good. I guess you don't get that reference because you're British. It sounds familiar. I don't get many references because I'm British, because the British government banned all forms of entertainment years back. Foster's Home. Ah. See, I yeah, did no, get, that... we do get Foster's Home in the UK, or at least we did. Oh, do we? Okay, then that's just me being stupid. Cartoon Network. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't watch a whole lot of Cartoon Network. Fair Imaginary Kids, yeah. Not, not something I'm uh, as acquainted with. Damn it, why did I use my super missiles? Because you're a big silly, that's what I'm doing. I am sorry, silly. sorry to break it to you. <laughs> Just silly. didn't have to say it. <laughs> Just break it slowly. I'm just a silly goose. Where do I, I forget where I need to go? You know. Now that you have the high jump, you can go back to Brinstar. Okay. So I do go back, I wasn't sure. It's funny because a while back, Blu ray was like the thing. And nowadays, like, like it was like if you have DVDs, what are you doing? Where is the future? And now I feel like with the digitization of everything. Blu-rays are almost feel like a thing of the past now because yeah. everyone wants you on their streaming service, which is weird because streaming services actually. <laughs> with with streaming services, you don't have to worry about scratch discs. You just have to worry about them wanting to take take away the content prematurely and then never being able to see it again. Because guess what? It's not on any other streaming service. Or. Yeah. Never the releasing way... it, and instead think... claiming a tax loss. Zaslav. Yeah, I think the main way, I think the main thing with streaming services right now, get out is, it's only a profitable business if you are like the streaming service. Because if there are others, then either you both have to have the same content, or you have to be the only one to have one of those pieces of content. Um. And if that's the case, then they're all. It, all it does is sort of slice up media into little bits of pie, and that. And it just depends on who gets that, like who's who, who gets to have what, and it makes all the streaming services overall. Which means that they're all just kind of trying to wait for the others to die off, meaning that, almost like an election, their streaming service becomes more powerful. They yeah. become the streaming service again. Um, so all streaming services are going to be bad for a while until some of them give up uh, and make the other ones, you know, have have their weight be worth it. Mm. So actually, Leon, you want to go back to the elevator to Norfair? Ah. 
Oh my days, Funimation being bought means they no longer let you use your physical copy. Sorry, digital copy? <sighs> yeah. The See, whole Funimation the thing. thing is really... Yeah. Hard. Yeah. My my sister, I really want to show her hot ones. I think she'd really enjoy it. It's hot on what? no major streaming services. And I'm like, it's only £2.50 to buy it on anything. Like, Apple movies, okay. Prime, ah. YouTube, anything. But if I buy it, I know I don't even technically ne necessarily because they could just change policies in a couple of years. So yeah, I just uh, I, I don't do it. It just makes being a consumer so exhausting oh, and yeah. not worth it. <laughs> It's totally anti-consumer. They want to own everything and extract every bit of money out of you that they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just it's just not working. And they're just waiting for it to not work more, like work worse for other people, so it works so that they can at least be the only like main streamer streaming service. But so, yeah, it's, it's just it's hard. not streaming services, but um, Nintendo.com. They recently published article promoting games with female leads, including Dread, uh, the new Peach game, Another Code Recollection, and Bayonetta Origins. Yeah. I have two of those four. Dread, obviously, and Bayonetta Origins. Um, both of them were $80 where I live, and so are the other two. And I don't think that's fair. That Nintendo charges eighty bucks for most of their um, yeah, most of their ones. Like, I just yeah, it's it's such a commitment to try out new games. Mm -hmm. Like the full retail releases that I bought recently, or like asked to be bought, uh, like have basically just been from like big franchises because I can't take the risk. <laughs> I can't risk like. Like, another code, I, I even know who the developers were. They were Sing. They didn't have any creative output on Little King's Story, but they were, like, manned. So I'm familiar with their name. But even then, it's like, that's a lot of money to sort of try out a new game. And I'm just not going to bother. Especially when my backlogs as huge as it is. I'm still in the dungeon in Tears of the Kingdom, and the game's been out since... So... Hey, one thing I've noticed is you can actually turn off and on the uh, each of the upgrades. Yes, you can. Is there any particular use for that, or not really? There's some speedrunning use. There's also game, which is secret attacks, almost like fighting game inputs that only work if you have certain things turned. On. So they'll work if you haven't collected certain items earlier for some reason, but they'll also work if you just turn them off. Yeah. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and show off our, if we get far enough. I'll... I was actually thinking it'd be cool if it's like they implemented that into sort of some of the puzzle solving, where it's like well I suppose pro the Prime games sort of have that, don't they? Yeah, Prime... These definitely led into sort of uh, um, the super attacks in this definitely led to the flamethrower, the wave buster, the ice spreader, the the black hole, and the sunburst. I think it's called. Mm. Yeah. Dark burst and sunburst. Sorry, that's one thing. And then sonic boom. That's all. I will say, I kind of miss uh, another thing. I don't want to just a trade because I think. But I do like how this game was unafraid to have just secrets for the sake of secret. Stuff like the animal, stuff like those like super attacks I talked about, crystal flash, things like that. I think it adds a certain layer to the game of like, oh, I didn't know was a thing. Which I don't think stuff like uh, Dread really has. I think Dread. 
I know t I know Torvus, and Torvus has played thousands of hours of Dread, mm. and there's still not that many like oh I didn't mess with Dread. I feel I feel like most of the things I know about that game, you know, are uh, very my like if I don't know it, it's because it's minor. It's like a, a detail rather than like something a bit more like. <laughs> Um, of course, that's partially because games are more expensive nowadays. Like, just putting a little secret in, the assets just cost more. So it's not as easy as just like... Just like, one afternoon, just like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, but yeah. Other news, I feel like I'm missing something here. Because I feel like... I think you are as well. Oh, I know what you're... Yeah, I know what you're missing. I do you... too, but I want to see if you can figure it out. It's just hit me. I've just been like, what? Almost like a baby tree video. Um, because Super Metroid is, is a very comfortable game for me. Mm. But you were on the right track with it about an hour ago. You had an idea to do something. Now you. Wait, I've been in this. I've been stuck correct. in the same part for like an hour. No, I haven't. no, no, what I'm saying is, there was a room about an hour ago where you had a certain idea that you tried, and now about an hour later there's a similar Wait, nearby. Wait, is it the, um, wall jump thing, which I was trying to do earlier, which I that. Yeah, I've said, I've said as much as I wanted. Uh, but there was a, you were trying something in a, in a room, but then, yeah. Was it in North Air or Binsa? It was it was all the way in like criteria. What I'm saying is if you tried the same thing that you did to that, it would work, so. Yeah, like your your secret your secret skill your secret finding skills are in you, Padawan. I believe in you. <laughs> also, Darren, I didn't say it, but yes, I do think it's going it's going to get to a point where it gets so rampant, the exploitation of the... that it's going to lose so much money and ruin the economy so much that then the government's going to have to step in. You need a certain item for that. Yeah, shrine spot. Yeah. Or speed booster, even. <laughs> yes. Adam hasn't permitted that yet, sorry. Damn you, Adam! Yeah. I don't think that was a terrible idea for They needed to execute it better. Uh, that's just basically everything in Other M. It's like, hey, this is a great idea, but you needed an actual game. Um, I think... Balance the balancing out of skills. Like it, it's cool to have like one man's vision for certain things, but I think Sakamoto having to juggle being a game designer, director, producer, and writer meant that you know th those things are often like distributed between different people in other games, and it might have helped to have at the very least a co-director or a co-writer or something just to polish up that execution. Yes. Maybe they could have worked with George R. R. Martin, like they uh, did on Elden Ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so insane that that was a thing that actually happened. Yes. Or. Well, he would be doing his own thing. Kojima. I don't know why yeah. he came into my head just now. Yeah. AKA the love of Jeff Keighley's life. <laughs> I'm the convinced game awards, that game awards AKA are just... 50 ad work, work verbs and a love letter directly to your, uh, to um, Kojima, Hideo Kojima. It, it's right. it, it, the show is his excuse to simp for him for like a good hour or so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for what Kojima brings to the industry as like an auteur, as like a real artist, but I don't yes. care for it, any of his games personally. I just... I think I still don't know what Death Stranding is about. <laughs> I saved a while ago. Um, 
quite recently, actually. It's, uh, yeah, the same it's, it's just we've been wondering. The map yeah. marks the last save station you saved at. Getting on the right track there, Leon. There you go. Not this room, I just meant, like, what, what you're up to. I, I don't even know what I'm up to anymore. <laughs> uh... Is it time we turn to r slash metroid? <laughs> um, no. I'll get, I'll get there eventually. Yeah, it's sorry, you, you're soft locked now. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've got an idea. Oh, uh, the games will be too- Someone on r slash metroid actually did talk about a soft lock very calmly, like, hey, I can't progress, and it turns out it wasn't actual- it was an actual soft lock on Super Metroid. Uh, <laughs> it was just one that's not very known about. Total accident for a first time player. Nope. That doesn't work. I'm feeling I need to get up there somehow. Like, up here. Just with the bug thing going to and fro. Hey, okay. Do want, uh, Darren, do you want me to explain what the soft lock is? Because it makes a lot of sense. Um... Maybe not the whole game, but um, I'll see how I. There, energy -wise. We're going for any percent and just however far Leon gets before they decide yeah. uh, to call it. Okay, so Darren, the final boss of this game takes uh, an, a certain amount of damage to hit. They can only be damaged by missiles. Idiot. However, the charge beam technically counts as a missile for most fights, including that one. So if you run out of missiles, you can use the charge beam. Um, this person never picked up the charge beam because there you go, Leon. That's where you're going. Uh, this yeah, person I, I like never Jaffa. picked up the charge beam because it's an optional item. It's just an optional item most people will find, and just so happened to not pick up enough missiles to do damage to the boss, and you can't get more missiles during the boss. And because there's a save station right outside the final boss, they couldn't finish the game. <laughs> so yeah. Uh... It's just very unlikely that you wouldn't have enough missiles or you wouldn't have the charge beam, but it's it's totally possible. I would say this is not as bad as David Jaff. Jaff? Jaffy? Um, because, at least with that room, mm. there was a tutorial about shooting hidden blocks. Super yeah. doesn't have any such tutorials. And at least I wasn't complaining that's broken. Yes. And bad level design. Oh, yeah. oh. Well, I say just me, so that's alright. Tor uh -oh. Torvis said to me as a joke when I was making which was my project, um, said to me, yo, you should include the Jaff room. And completely forgot saying this to me. And then, <laughs> during Taurus's time actually playing through the game, um, when I got to a certain star coin bonus room, <laughs> just went dead silent <laughs> because I had actually made, I had no ideas what to make the layer of this bonus room. So I made it an almost one for one recreation of the Jaff room. <laughs> and it completely oh. caught him off guard. <laughs> I love very silly memes like that. Um... My memes are great, eh? Yeah. I recently learned that Geometry Dash, uh, a famous review of it, complained about a section of a certain level. Uh, the spider section of Dash. I don't really know what that means because I never played Geometry Dash, but because they complained about this, it became a meme in the community where it's like Dash Spider. Uh, which was like the Jaff Room thing combined with Loss, where people would recreate that in like ROM hacks and stuff, like the layout of that room, and be like, guys, I, I can't get through this, it's, it's unreadable. Yeah. Thanks for it's coming, like... Darren. Yes, thank you, Darren. Sorry, I only just took a message. I hope you have a good evening, Darren. And hopefully see you soon. Yeah, please, uh, ciao. Ciao it out. Have a, have a ciao, you know? <laughs> Oh, 
get ambushed. Screw this, screw this, screw this. Come on. There we go. Not bad. I'll be heading off at some point soon as well, just because. Um. Just because I'm mean, really. I'm a. <laughs> I do know how to shoot diagonally, it's just. Do you, though? <laughs> Passive aggressive director. <laughs> See, Darren was the director of uh, a Metroid fan site because, in his own time, he directs how to play Metroid. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, we were gonna call the website Gatekeepers, but <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Nah, Backseaters, that was it. That could definitely have different semantics. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, I do know a YouTube channel. Um, I have a friend who makes YouTube content called Backseat. He uh, made the video about ranking the villagers based on how edible in Animal Crossing. Oh no. <laughs> Who is most edible? I think it was Chadder. Because it's a literal mouse called Chadder who is themed after cheese. Uh. I don't think I should mention the thing that I was going to mention. <laughs> Probably not. Is it within Super Metroid's Peggy 12 rating? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Let's just keep that. It has something to do about ranking and amiibos. Oh, Animal Crossing Villagers. Yeah. He specifically left out any in that video. He also did another one of out of all like 500 villagers. Mm. It just kept a few out, just just for safety. Right. You're on the right track. Don't worry. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. I was just thinking, like, isn't there actually a save station where there's like a breakable block? to progress, and then I realized I'm thinking of Zero Mission. I'm pretty sure I tried that wall anyway. Let's try again. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think there is a, a any secret tunnels and save stations in Super Metroid. I think there is one in this game. But I can't remember where. We call ourselves a Metroid fan site, we don't know these things. <laughs> SMH. No, it's so hard to find good help these days. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Why doesn't everyone know as much about Metroid as I do? Did they not yes. understand? Oh, come on. Why isn't everyone else a human Wicketroid? If only. I, I had this, I had this, uh, I have this quite a lot in the Looking Story space. Where oh. I forget because the game is so small, even like slightly obscure knowledge usually isn't known by most people. So I was saying on stream, so like, hey guys, you want to know something cool about Shishka Babu's wife? Like a cool detail about her? And people were going like, Shishka Babu has a wife? <laughs> I was like, oh, right. <laughs> so that's how like, <laughs> right. That's how a normal person's amount of LKS knowledge meets mine. <laughs> I do like to think I have a pretty, an, a pretty encyclopedic knowledge of Metroid. Um, for simplicity's okay. sake, I will say you're in the right room, at least. This isn't like a bonus or anything. Beautiful. What is this? Bowser's Castle in uh, Super Mario Bros? 
It's actually the layout of this room is supposed to uh Craig's lair from Metro. Yeah. As you can tell, I'm doing fabulously. There is some kind of spot in here. Don't remember which kind it is though. Be careful of the spikes on the ceiling. Was that literally just cry was that all cried what? Well, I actually know it comes back to me. Can't remember, does he? Yeah, no, that's crazy. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> that's how big he is in Metroid NES. Yeah. It's not how big he is in uh, Dread, though. Couldn't be here for a little bit. Just yeah, they couldn't. Some... They couldn't fit a creature as big as Craig Actually, on the NES on the SNES. If you, if you go up. Yeah, there's a secret in this room. Ooh, I like secrets. Just... You could just go for it now. I want to have full health. <laughs> but yeah, this, every um... capsule counts. I think no that, yeah. capsule left behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm putting the finishing touches on an upcoming piece of content. Which should hopefully be coming out very soon. Very nice. Everything else is ready for it. It's more like I have to sit down and finish writing. I feel like that as well. Um, I have to write a script for something because related, and I have the notes for it. It's just about like thinking up the vibe, like what's the um. You know, the, the stringing along. <laughs> yeah, Leon, this is what we were trying to tell you. <laughs> yeah. You just come here. <laughs> I want my two minutes back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, could just, I, just, I could just go... Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what? I think you are allowed to cut out parts of Mickey. You just, you just cut out that bit. And just be like, oh, I think... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Bugs. Do do you mind? I've seen a fan theory that this dead soldier is with Hmm. Yeah, they've never said who it is. I Just like it more that way. Guy. There's too many answers to mysteries now. It, it's like um, um the soldier in uh Ocarina of Time, I suppose. Yeah, Equally, it's possible that it isn't anyone specific. I, I like it more that way. I feel, again, I feel a lot of answers to questions in media nowadays, like FNAF and Tunnel. But actually, it's just kind of fun to build mystery, you know? I'm running out of games to complain about, guys. <laughs> I'm going after Dread, I'm going after uh, FNAF. <laughs> Belly. Actually, I complained that Dread didn't have an optional sequence, but I did really like. I, 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 a hundred percent, no notes loved the the secret crate kill. That's the kind of thing that I feel Metroid's been missing. Because this game has that with the grappling Drake, but I, I really miss that kind of side. Never would do in this side. I like how he just holds up his hand and says, See a missile, please. just stop it. <laughs> Crate says no today. Oh no.
Getting close. It only takes... I know it takes five super missiles to kill them. And super missiles, I think, are worth five times more, so... At what point during this game's development do you think they just looked from the original Valley, the height of Samus, and went, This guy just needs to be like two rooms high. This one specifically needs to be just massive. Good question. It's a very sp specific choice, and it's quite bold. Yeah. Ah! You're turning into me. I always growl whenever I have trouble. <laughs> no, I had I had trouble with Crane the first go. time. Not that it is your first time. Hey, yeah. Wait, where's well the spikes guy? The spikes were never there, they're in your head all uh, sort of dies. I see. But at least I didn't die that time. Be prayed. Well done. Woo! Let's give up for Leon. The barrier suits. Well, yeah, the what's barrier. that? Uh, what's that party horn sound effect? No. Whatever I was doing before, not it. <sighs> Poor dead well, soldier guy. the one mystery that I still want to solve is who played Samus in the Super Metroid commercial. It was me! <laughs> <gasps> Stand back, son. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did try looking for that guy as well, but... Uh, yeah. Find him. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just like a guy on the street, like, hey, do you want to just come in for one commercial? Here's <laughs> that, a tenner. That's probably it. Um... You might get interviewed by some guy who runs a Metro website in about 20 years, and it's, well, it's alright. What's the website? Yeah. I probably have surprised a lot of Japanese people uh, during my investigation, because, you know, a foreign oh, reporter is... A yeah. foreign guy is asking them about a commercial they did 30 years ago. They go, what? Yeah. How many of them have heard of Canada? I just realized this looks like Craig as well. This well, they would know about it, but I don't, I, I don't tell them that exactly. Okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah. I just mentioned Shine Sparkers. We're overseas, that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I just know that uh, often, like, anything sort of English-speaking gets in Japan can, can can be attributed to, um, the... Uh, to America, or the US, even though, you know, obviously it's, um, yeah, not, not the only place that speaks English. I wonder how many of them you say, oh yeah, it's a guy for the Shine Sparkers. Such so, so Shine Sparkers. And they go, oh, like the anime Get a Robo G? Because <laughs> that's where it originates from, isn't it? Yeah, I knew it was from an. I had to look it up real quick, because I've never heard of this anime outside of Shine Spark as a name coming from it unofficially. What is the name of those enemies which sort of hug you to death? I think these are called Beatons. That's a very Metroid name if I ever did hear one. Yes. Her, is this room just that? nothing? Or... Try Ooh. shooting around. Her. Now, would uh. Metroid just give you a room with nothing in it? No. I mean, Metroid NES does I mean, all I mean, the time. I mean, if, if it's developed by Rare, then yes, lots of them. <laughs> uh, well, I've never played a... Actually, no, I lie. What am I all about? I've played three Rare games. I've played the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy. 
But I haven't played Banjo and Kazooie or, or Tui or DK64. So. <gasps> I like DK64, but I still can't forgive them for the weird plinth thing in uh, Creepy Castle. <laughs> what did that would... do? Was it supposed to do anything or not? <laughs> I would play those games. Uh, it's just great access to them. Like, the best way for me to access th to th them is the horrible Nintendo Expansion Pass thing. And f for whatever reason, I already bought the Mario Kart booster pass separately, so the fact that that comes bundled with it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, it just—I don't think it'd be the best use of my money to expand an already lackluster online system. Fair. Yeah. Will we get in trouble for saying that, Roy? Will we get in trouble for saying we don't like Nintendo Online? <laughs> no, we—we're a fan site, but we're not a sim for a Nintendo. Like we okay. criticize them all the. We've done it plenty of times. I don't want on one of your, in I don't want one of your interview uh, prospects to go through because it's like, listen, man, I really like Nintendo Online. <laughs> no, no, we're, we'll be fine. We only I know. interview past developers because anyone. I, I know, I know that's be, true because of yeah. embargoes, NDAs, mostly. But yeah, I will say, I have connected with some current employees at Retro very, very tentatively. I am not going to ask them about Prime Four. They cannot tell me. And that's the way. That's that's just how it is. Like yes, in uh, in this yeah in this circle, you will you will meet people who are currently in game development, and you can't really talk to them about anything. <laughs> no. I all I would just say is, I know you're working on it. I hope it's going well. I'm excited to see it, and. Yeah, just treat them respectfully and don't harass yeah. them for just just be respectful. Keep You're that seems to be missing a lot of people. I I know I know. Just I will I will say once by chance I did meet a game developer done games that I had played and hmm. just told me about a ton a ton of random details about upcoming projects. I was like, how can you tell me this? Because no one would believe you. <laughs> <laughs> they were totally correct. No one would believe me. Team Cherry uh, CEO comes to you. Uh, Hornet dies in Silk Song. No one will believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and then she does, and you go, "Oh sh." <laughs> yeah. So the real danger of Australia is not the spiders, it's the, it's the prospect of being given confidential silk sun spoilers. <laughs> uh. I think it's always important to remember as well that like, game developers are real people. Yes. I cannot stress this enough. There is... I, I just had to... I just did a... I had to, I chose to. But I felt like I had to. I made a video on Little King Story's PC port. And I wanted to make it very clear, like... Hey, I'm mocking these, like... Terrible things about the port, but I never want it to be like a... What were they thinking? Or like, anything like that. And I actually tried as much as I could in the video to show the developer side of the story. And show how much they tried, and it's just... Porting Wii games to PC is difficult, no matter how skilled the developers are, and yeah. And it's always getting that balance of like, you're like trying to show your disappointment for something without actually like, feeling, making it feel nasty or, or entitled. Because right. none of us are entitled to video games. We are, we are lucky we have an industry that can give us this at all. Um, yes. And it's okay to be disappointed in things. It's okay that other people are disappointed in things that you're not and enjoy things that you don't. But um, we do have to remember that developers, at the very least, are real people. CEOs and executives, maybe not. Maybe they're not real. <laughs> but Bobby it... Kodak yeah. is not an gonna... actual human person. I was actually <laughs> going to add to you saying that we're lucky that we have these games, but I was also going to say it's like we're lucky that people are still passionate about making them rather than just whatever is popular right now because that's how you get yeah, yeah. all these new fascinating new games unique games and stuff like that rather than just what I think about want. <laughs> yeah. yeah I think 
how I, th I believe the Metroid community, however much they may, not everyone in the community, but like the majority Bicca. of people may dislike Other M, but yeah, and Samus's portrayal, but they don't take it out on the actress Jessica Martin who played her. Like no, Martin, when we interviewed Martin, her. I... I've listened to her interviews. She is nothing like her character. She was absolutely told to just do that yes. for her character. That's not, yeah. And that's how it's, it is. The, they want the character done in a certain way, and so they do it. It's a choice. It's a choice that doesn't work for people. But at the end of the day, um, Sam, the way Samus is portrayed in Other M is the end product of a mix of people. It's the end product yes. of her overall direction, her animation, her writing, her translation from, of that writing into English, all these things, and then also her voice on top of it all. So it's, it's, if it, when people have these problems, they have to think of it as part of a much bigger system. Because it can be easy to think of things that go wrong as a human made a, a, a choice. That they had like infinite possibility and infinite power over, and they made because they're stupid. When actually, it's often people make choices under the circumstances. Video game development can be very circumstantial, um, and that, yeah. Um, By the way, Clay says hi. Yeah, I'm just ignoring Clay Drax. Hello, Clay Drax. We don't vibe with the French here on Shine Sparkers. No. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hey, Clay Drax, good to see you. Um, we have not. Have we brought up Flat Egg? Maybe we very briefly up, once. We talked a bit about Dread. Did we we haven't mentioned, mentioned we the We haven't brought man. up Cow either. Um, oh my have God. you two been educated on Cow? No. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe save that new. for another time. Because... <laughs> yeah, wait, I will throw a copy of Alcance through my window for this. Cow is kind of a thing that Darren Gladrax and I have together. Well, mostly them two. And I know a bit about it. Um, they have a Thank whole you. lore set up for it. Thank you, Gladrax, for fighting the real oppressive authority of our time. The Little King Story community. <laughs> um, wait, wait, what was it called again? Towel or Towel or Towel? I, I thought I completely misheard it. Which is why I can't. Cow. It's cow. it's a Pokemon that is just a cow. Oh. Um, it's Terrakion. So, so, so basically, um, I wasn't wrong by going me. Yes, no. you weren't wrong. <laughs> uh, no, that actually does remind me, though. Another yeah. uh, version of like don't not hating on like developers is the fact that Game Freak don't tend to make many creative choices on Pokemon games. Um, most there's a difference between developing and like um, the creative. Like the design document, it's it's often quite common, in fact, for a publisher to give a design document to a game developer, where the the, the developers have very little choice in those kinds of decisions, and that's definitely how it works with like the Pokemon company. Like the, they they run it as a media franchise as a whole. Game Freak is only the video game programming side, and they don't get to choose things like their own like release schedules and stuff, yes. which is why. Uh, and I don't usually want. I don't really want to use streams to like get into like arguments and stuff. But I feel it's okay to say like, "Hey, don't don't just hate on like developers, right? Mm. They don't they don't have they don't have that kind of power. Um, it's it's often a lot deeper than that, and much more like based on like corporations and stuff. They do a job that they're told to do. Yeah, some of them, some developers make terrible games, and I don't believe. Because they have been told to do a certain task a certain way. They do not care as long as they get paid and none of the executives shout at them. Mm. They are not they don't necessarily owe us as standing up to their bosses. You know, because they could, I suppose. They could stand up and say, hey, this is a terrible choice. But at the same time, that's not actually their job. And it's not their responsibility. Um, and we are not entitled to that. The as only I game. idyllic as it would be, you know? So I agree with you on most sense. In in the I agree with you for the most part. There is one game that I think is probably fair game to judge the people who uh made it. The guy game. The 
Guy game? Yeah, but I think that's because they're publisher and developer. But also, even if they weren't, I think there has to come a point where you're like, I don't think I can make this one, Chief. No. Thank you, Gladrax. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Gladrax is a very opinionated man, so when he says I'm speaking facts, I, I know it must be true. <laughs> Have it uh, confirmed from the source. Yeah, I want to do a video on the on new Little King story, which is Little King story edited kind of by a different team, and I want to make it very clear that I have nothing against the team that did it, and I don't think any of them responsible for why it's as terrible as it is. Uh, that entirely comes down to like a marketing board and people from another company telling them what to do, and like, the circumstances of oh, that. Just sec. Right, apologies I double about that. that. That's, um, that's why I wasn't worried about that. <laughs> apologies about that. Uh, turns out because we're in Norfair, um, it caused my fire alarm to go off. So, yay! Um, but yes, uh, carry on, carry on. I also need to detangle my headphones. Apparently. All, all, yeah, no, all I was really saying is like, I want to be very careful with that video because I don't want it to sound like how dare they do this because the they can be people misattribute why decisions are made. Uh, a lot of the time, very poor decisions for video games are made by business people, not creative people. Um, and that, that applies to every medium, really. Uh, we'll see it time and time again, it's going to take a while for it to stop, but we're seeing the repercussions of it all the time, and we can only just hope that business people learn to listen to the creatives, and, uh, and that consumers learn to stop mindlessly hating on bad creative products and thinking more critically like huh why did it turn out this way are there certain restrictions why it couldn't have been another way you know so yeah like i always feel really bad about like the amount of hate that no because that's a game where it was like it was so easy to trash on it and now looking back after it's gotten enough updates to be like fixed it's like what, wait what game are you talking about sorry because you can't out there oh no man's sky oh yeah Got a lot of hate on its release, and a lot, but like a lot of mockery, like a lot of like, what were these developers thinking? These these mm. stupid people who lied to us or whatever. And Personally, it just sounded like they got really excited and overpromised by accident. Yeah, that's it. And people got people th treated them like they they like they were ripping them off, like it was like a, uh, or at the very least, the game got really mocked. Um, and looking back, it's like, again, there's a difference between dif disappointed, but that tone, now it's a bit uncomfortable to look back on, because that game is really revered now. Love. Mm. No Man's Sky after it got all the updates. The developers were clearly passionate. They they carried on with their vision. They've now made a very successful game that's at every game awards for the last, like, six years. Yeah. Um, Not to mention, every update that they've published is completely free. Is it real? Whoa, I did not know that. That's yeah. sick. And from what I can tell, I, I don't think there's any microtransactions in it as well, either. So it's like... Yeah. It's, better. it's a really... Yeah, you're in the right spot, by the way. You're doing the right thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really... It's it's almost like a... What, what am I looking for? It's like it's, it's a really positive tale. It's, it's a really... It's, it's, it's a cool... It's a, it's a, yeah. 
gives, gives us a lot of hope for the industry with that kind of thing. It's about the time it's treated it like, and it's kind of sad actually, because, um, because because these developers who may have looked like grifters actually treated as such or mocked as such, uh, actually just didn't have the money to pull off their vision yet. <laughs> now they have, and yeah. Again, it's just remembering that developers are and CEOs aren't. <laughs> <laughs> This spawn's both really useful and really annoying. Wait, technically isn't Roy the CEO of Shine Sparkers? Yes. Roy, are you uh, a person? Okay. Sorry, Roy. <laughs> Your person status has been... Ah. Uh. <laughs> Can we spawn Mr. Platform or no? Apparently this platform does not want to respawn, so I'm going to go out and then go back in. This room's a cool room. Who's calling me? Birth me again, someone is calling me. Sorry about that, that was just um, something to do with the store I work at, um, but it's out of my control, so not my problem. <laughs> There's actually something really cool that we just can't tell you about because of an NDA. Yes, that's the reason. <laughs> Gladrax, are you still we're, here? We're, we're getting Metroid Prime 4 like two years before it releases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're all playtesters, we get dragged. Uh, for legal reasons, that is a good. 
Uh, Gladrax, are you still here, by the way? Because I want to say I, I caught some of your stream the other day. Uh, I just couldn't understand much of it because it was in French. But, um, keep on streaming, dude. Streaming's cool. I'm glad to see my friends do it. I have just returned. Somehow, Gladrax returned. <laughs> You know what that means. We have to literally quit the stream. <laughs> oh, no. oh, thank heck it stops at a certain point. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be screwed. Now that we've collected the Shine Sparker symbol, we have to quit the game. <laughs> Are it, has it happened? Are we officially Shine Sparkers? We're yeah. officially... We, once we do a single sl Shine Spark... I'll just hover over the end button and once we do a single Shine Spark, just kill it. We had this joke a while ago that as a rite of passage to join Shine Sparkers, you had to be able to get the secret message in Fusion. Which would I mean played Fusion once and I didn't get it, so... Uh, <laughs> which would mean that... Uh, Almost none of us get to work for the site because the only one in our our friend group who has done it is Mr. Mandeli, who used to be a graphics artist for uh, our headers. Oh, but the current graphics artist has, though. I'm pretty sure Tolvas has. I'd be surprised if he hasn't. So, uh, I guess I'll have to cede my title to him. Hey, Akori. Well, uh, thank you for joining the stream. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. Hey, Corey, sorry about that. I was just uh, dealing with work things. So I do... I'm going to be slightly unprofessional and just have uh, my phone on the side there so I can keep an eye on the group chat. You never did the secret message in Fusion? Dude. Did you ever, like, do the X Factor in Super Metroid? Did you ever do the Ridley before Kraid shortcut in Zero Mission? Like, are you even a Metroid fan if you haven't done these incredibly pure things? I can clip through the ground in Metroid Dread. Okay, to be fair, that's better than I can. So <laughs> hats off to you. Yeah, I believe that's called the Shine Sink, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I got... yeah. <clears throat> I find it really funny, there's a skip in Metroid called Mega Skip, and it's just named because Torvus did it to clown on a casual player who I'm friends with called Megas. Because <laughs> Megas just got stopped trying to do another skip and said, Hey, there's no way I can get out. So Torvus invented... A, like, a, a, a speedrun strategy just to show, yeah, you can, idiot, and it had never been done before, and it got called Mega Skip. Um, it sometimes gets called Magoo Skip because a bigger speedrunner tried to sort of hijack it, but, yeah. Olive Garden Skip! I can't remember what Olive Garden Skip's called that, but yes, I do know about Olive Garden Skip. I, uh... Actually, have eaten at Olive Garden in the last two years. What did you think about their unlimited breadsticks? The breadsticks are what they have going for them. <laughs> um. Well, no, I did Don't enjoy. Don't join named Olive Garden stick. No way. I know Do personally. <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't speak super often, but like. That's really funny uh, that I, I know the guy and I literally didn't know that he named Olive Garden Skip. Yes. Oh, I need to check in on Doughboy. It's been a while. Um, I remember I released last April when I released my, like, What is Little King Story video. Like, the biggest video I'd ever done. Uh, he said, he specifically said to me that he watched some of it and had to stop because it was so good that he knew he had to play the game and didn't want to watch any more because he didn't want to spoil anything about it for himself. 
And he said it was one of the best YouTube videos he'd ever watched. And I was just like, dude, what a based individual. Hang on a sec, is there a Shine Spark area nearby? But... Is there a Shine Spark area? Oh my god. Am I gonna have. Am I going to be making a room on Wicketroid called Olive Garden? <laughs> you might have to. Uh... <laughs> Right now, my focus there is uh, developers for Metroid Prime Remastered, specifically Liquid Development, because I've covered everyone else. I am, yeah. That whole, yeah. If you ever get Wait, me on the just... podcast right. episode about Prime Remastered, uh, I will have a lot to say on that topic. I'll say that much. <laughs> One of the other staff members is blaming what's happened on Roland, which is a rat, rat that we named. By the way, just for okay. you, for your information, there, Roy. <laughs> Boy. Whee! Oh. Um. Yeah. The um. <sighs> yeah. The thing about primary mustard, you can argue. You can m maybe argue. Well, a lot of this work that these developers did has been redone, so that works not in the game anymore. And it's like, maybe, but why is Kenji Yamamoto credited for his music, which is still in the game from the original Prime, but the other Prime developer, the other composer for the game, isn't listed in the credits, despite her work still being in the credit, like still being used from the, the original game. That's what I don't get. And, like, there's clear, like, th these developers, their work is still here. Their animations are still here. Yes. Um, yeah, they why? should have all been credited. They were in they Trilogy. They should have all been credited. Mm. The credits are so long in Prime Remastered that they literally have to loop the credits theme, like, three times. So, if it, it's already a super long what, credit, how is it that it's this long but it doesn't have the original? One loop credits long anyway. You can yeah. probably go back into. Oh, yeah, you're already going into it now. Yeah, this is this is where you can just run, okay. just do it, just run, just get those speedy little feet and you you go for it, girl. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Feel you're a little bit behind. Oh well. Yeah, no, no, I'm looking at the actual stream itself, which yeah. has a slight latency to it. Hey, late praise is better than no praise. Exactly. <laughs> Just, yep, yeah, make sure there's an unfortunate timing, because you could be praising me while I'm actually dying. <laughs> it's like, well done! Absolute suffering. Let's go! <laughs> These look like X parasites. No, they, they, they do. Have. That is mentioned on the Metroid wiki. Um, I feel under... like I need the freeze beam. Ice beam, sorry. So I probably can't do that yet, can I? Ooh. Ah. I like I like what <laughs> I like what you're saying, Patrick. No cost too great, no mind to think, no will to break, no ah. voice to cry suffering. Born of God and void, you shall seal the blinding light that plagues the dreams. You are the void. You are the shine sparker. <laughs> Yay, got ice beam. Porn of shine and spark. I suppose if you don't want to like freeze enemies but just kill them outright, then like that chocolate power ups is good. Haha. <laughs> I'm invisible again. There I am. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're close to getting power bombs, uh, which means I can show off that thing for stuff. The uh, the secret power bomb final smash move thing. <laughs> Super final smash power bomb mortal thing. Yeah, the thing with the thing and the the ting and the ting <laughs> and the ting and the ting. I just sit here every so often going, I just want to play Hot War Hollow Knight, and then I remember actually trying to do the final Pantheons and Radiant Horns, and uh, then I remember why I'm not playing Hot War Knight, because Ascended Pure Vessel is beat right now. You finally did Absolute Radiance? Nice! Did you do it in the Hall of Gods, or did you do it as part of Final Pantheon? Yeah, I bet it did. He did do, uh, Absolute Radiance. I didn't watch because, uh, I didn't want to be spoiled, but... I wasn't That's in the call really when good. it happened. Oops. I'm currently trying to be all gods on Radiant, and I've done, I think, 20... Six of them? So, yeah. You could call me something of a. My ex, but. <laughs> no. I will say that at the beginning of February, I was still in. Guaranteed something to send, so. You're not crazy enough to be radiant bosses? Dude, I am. I c if I can do it, you can do it. Flat Egg. Flat Egg's Disciple. I'm still... Uh, the reason I'm doing it is because I want the boss practice mainly. Um, I'm really bad at, like, Watcher Knights, so if I feel like if I can get to a point where I can beat Watcher Knights at least almost Radiant, then I can probably take them on in a pan. That's, that's my logic. Yeah, the Watcher Knights were very tricky. Yeah. They ain't easy. Some of the bosses are really easy, Ray. Um, you just need to not be bad, genuinely. <laughs> like, you just need to remember every pattern and remember how to avoid it, and then just feel confident that now that you know that, you, you know, do your, do your thing. Just don't get hit, you know? Just be good. Just be good at the game. Don't die. Try not sucking so much. <laughs> I say all this, but the other day, I went in. Uh, so I, I, Little King Stories Tiny Community means it only jobs, um, which is the main. One of the main ways you interact with the game is the different jobs of the citizens that you uh, And it let me go to uh, the second boss of the game first, which wouldn't usually be possible. Um, and I figured out early on that it would let me do this, and my chat was freaking out when I did it. And then I was like, I was, uh, and then my plan was, I'll do this. I'll... That's so easy. And then I'll just beat the boss in a couple tries because I'm really good at the game. Uh, even though I'm underleveled, but the fact that I was underleveled meant quite a lot, and I spent three hours on the boss and had to come back with a slightly better boot. So, I say just get good, just don't get hit, but it, it don't always be like that. Unfortunately <laughs> not. Well, I can get up here now. Yay. Yay! Woo! My ascension of crud one of these guys. I hate this platforming section. Yeah. It can be annoying. Oh yeah, I've got like, um... Yeah. 
Super, yeah, I think, I mean, oh, I've said oh, it. Like, that was useful. <laughs> Super, Super Metroid has, I love the world design of Super Metroid much more than that was done like Dread. But as a platformer, <laughs> like I don't mind the controls uh, and the physics for like general exploration. It, they're fine. But when it gets to platforming, I can't say it's it's nearly as comfortable as what would come later. Even Zero Mission feels a lot better as a platform. Um, oh, come on! Stop eating me, Samasita! Isn't ah! this... Uh, this corridor is just called... I think it's called the, the Hell Corridor in the uh, speed Let's see. Uh, it's just called the Samasita. Which way is its name? There's a fake um, Samasita, isn't there? Somewhere. Not in this room. Don't jump into all of them in this room. Oh. There is a fake Samasita, it's a different I'm only going to say that so the <laughs> misremembering of the game isn't going to get you killed. <laughs> yeah, the game really went, hey, you've had the high jump boots? How about try not to use them too much or you'll die? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. And they say Metroid's too cryptic. Easy. It's in here, isn't it? Yeah. Alright, and then I can show you the, um... I was talking about. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, come on! Why it gotta be like that? Oh. Ah. <laughs> Even with the latency, I had this slight like, feeling of. <laughs> oh, that works. <laughs> Hey, you have it now? Yeah. Um, what gave that away? <laughs> well, if you want me to show you the thing I was talking about, um, go into your... It does look like a hamburger. You've ruined this game for me, I think, Clay Drax. It looks like a hamburger with, like, a, an ammunition belt. But if you go into your um, Samus' equipment screen... Okay. Oh, this is going to sound... Screen? This is going to sound so insane it's not real, but you want to turn off all beams except ice, well, charge beam and one other. And at the moment I think you only have charge beam, so I think it'll be fine. Um, then, yeah, you haven't found any other, so it's just charge and ice. Then when you, what you want to do is just have the power bomb selected and then uh, in gameplay and then just charge up beam and hold it and that's all you want to do i'll be so right back keep everything on yeah yeah every everything on um you just want to make sure that it's charge and one beam but you're on the way and then when you're in gameplay you just want to charge oh. up your beam while you have power bombs like selected not necessarily like use a power bomb just have it selected yeah. And then just use use your charge beam. Oh. Don't fire it. Just keep charging it. I like this. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, there's um four of these for each of the other beams that can be combined with charge beam. Every time you use it, it'll use up a power. Uh, it it eats from your power bomb ammunition to do this. Okay. Um, so yeah, and there'll be a different effect for the wave beam, the spacer, and the plasma. That's really cool. Yeah, it's com yeah, it's an entirely just like, why not kind of inclusion, and I, I love it, and I kind of just wish more games in general did things like this. Hmm. So, is there a fake Samasita in this room? Uh, still a different room. Uh. <laughs> if you would believe it. <laughs> I believe the fake Samusita doesn't animate, but I could be wrong. Mm. 
believe in things that last. Pop was on a cedar. <laughs> I, I will need to be heading off very soon, though, um, if that's okay, because I do yeah. have bed to go to. I'll probably be uh, finishing up soon, anyway. Yeah, hey, that's great, yeah. I've been live for two and a half hours, which ain't bad. That's a, that's a decent stream time. Um, mm. I streamed for like five hours the other day, and honestly, it started to make me go delirious. <laughs> oh, look at that, a save station. So it's almost as if the game is saying that maybe I should... You are not allowed to leave dead to wait. Yeah, but I can pretend. <laughs> or do you think, I, get, think... I get my government mandated uh, break period where I can pretend I get to leave. Do you think that this is probably a good spot for me to uh, finish up for the evening? Um, I'd say you want to go just a little further because there is okay. one. There's a nice little like point of like uh, like a little conclusion, if you will. That's coming up in, like, t 10 minutes, really. Okay. That means you have to stay as well, yeah? Just keep going up, yeah, and then you'll and then you'll see what I... A, like, a good place to leave off in my humble onion. Okay. Oh, no! Oh, why did I go through there? Oh! It's a good thing I saved! <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> but that is the room with the fake Santa Cita, by the way. Oh. Now I'll leave that room for now. But I will keep going up, like you said. Yeah. Just uh, keep SNES jumping, design. Just keep jumping, jumping, jumping. Da, mm. da, 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 da. Jumping, jumping. I'm back. Welcome back. Hey, you, we're about to, we're about to wrap things up. Okay. There's a nice little sort of. Uh, like a sending off point uh, in a moment. So. It's not yes. death, is it? No. Better than yeah, that. If you open that door, it just kills you and deletes you. <laughs> <laughs> it pulls an undertale. Ah! No, back, back in my cave. It's safe in the cave. Not even know if I'm going the right way. Oh, is it the pipe? Oh. Nope. Am I going the right way for the send off? Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. I love this music as well. Oh, it's perfect. Let's go back here for a sec. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Yeah, that'll do, yeah. I always just thought this was a really cool thing to do with map design when I played it. Mm. Like, hey, you came all the way around the map and I'm inside and now you're at your shit. And that's what it, that's what it meant, it's like a nice little vision. Huh. It almost feels like the end of an arc, even. Yeah. And then the music changed yes. from compared to the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. The music change only happens after you get like the power bombs, I think, or something. So yeah. So is this the part you're talking about then? Yeah, yeah, cool. the ship, the return to the ship. Yeah, yeah. I wrote it's more about of, like the halfway point, sort of. It yeah, it it basically does, which is funny because only one of the four bosses is beaten, but to be honest, the other bosses are much closer together. Yeah. Just, like, I've gotten through two of the four main bosses, is that right? One of them. Um, or have I gone through three? It, then straight after this, you dip back to Norfair for a bit, um, and then the next boss is Fantoon, which goes straight into uh, Dragon, which goes straight into Ridley. 
and they're all yeah. like kind of a fairly linear path from each other. So okay. yeah. The yeah, um, I wrote about this sort of return to the ship in my uh, piece on Super Metroid in the Chimes Parker's 30th anniversary um, feature that we did. Um, yeah, it's always been like a very powerful moment for me and uh, a real reason why the series and I love the genre. Hmm. But yes, that is me for this evening. So thank you anyone who's popped by for, well, popping by. Any leading words from uh, Roy or Deadweight? Yeah, I think this went really well. I mean, we had some technical hiccups, but mm. that tends to happen even with the most expensive, or the experienced mm. stream and using the most expensive technology. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, really great to replay Super Metroid on during such a momentous milestone 30 years ago we got exactly. this game and yeah it's been it it still plays just like it did all the way back then mm. yeah so this is thank you to everyone for second. joining <laughs> yeah what about um, you, i love super metroid it's one of the most influential games over my life and i think it's still the most influential metroidvania um i am glad that it's still able to be loved today and i'm glad that i got to do the stream because i don't often get to do metroid related content online uh but when i do i'm always happy because i love this series so much uh, uh so even though i had about half an hour's notice that i was going to be commentating this i am really glad that i did um it was uh, it was it was it was really nice too. It, it really did uh, warm my heart. So thank you both for this opportunity, and I'm glad that I could help fix the technical issues. I think we got through them pretty quickly, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So yeah. We started like 10, 15 minutes late, so it's all good. Also, it's apologies fine. about the bopping my head. Like this is just such a jam. It is such a jam. No need to apologize. This is an excellent song. I didn't actually. I've never really really. Liked this song until there was a fully orchestrated version of it on Harmony for Hunter and then I was awesome. like I really get it now yeah so <laughs> anyway so but yeah so that is it um, if you have popped by and don't know what Shine Sparkers is and want to find out more then just go to shinesparkers.net we have lots of um, editorials on Actually, Roy, I'll let you take this because you probably have the best script in mind. I'm just talking off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, Roy, I'll send you the That's script okay. real quick. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks. I forgot my copy. Um, yeah. So if you haven't been to our website before, we're shinesparkers.net. We have interviews with a lot of Metroid developers, including most relevant to Super Metroid, uh, at the end of last year, we did an interview with the director of the Japanese commercial. We have community spotlights for various artists, musicians, cosplayers, and other creators in the community, very talented people. Uh, written editorials, translations of really obscure content, uh, and we also have a podcast. Just yesterday, we shared our latest episode, which was about the 30th anniversary of Super Metroid. Um, yeah, we would love to see you here again whenever we decide to stream next. Uh, I don't want to, we don't have a date in mind yet, but I, th I think we'd like to do this again, right? It's nice to have figured out the technicals of it. So now let's that's all it, done, it should be, yeah, it should be pretty straight. Let's put it this way. Um, there's probably, our next stream will probably be before Metroid Prime 4 releases. I think that's a safe bet, yes. Um, and let's just say that Gex fans are in a real treat to tonight. Why? <laughs> <laughs> mm, can't tell NDA. <laughs> Legal reasons we're joking. <laughs> yes. Um, um... Yeah, it's all about Croc now. Get Gex. 
It's all yeah. dark. <laughs> right, so, but yeah. Yeah, I'm happy just to try and set up uh, additional streams in the future. Obviously, I can't promise I'll be in every one, but I would like to try and facilitate more of this. So, um, yeah, I suppose until then. Until next time, uh, thank you everyone time. for joining, and we will see Wait, you next mission. See you next see mission. You next mission.